Welcome to this Chemscape presentation on one of the most common occupational health hazards, noise. What is noise? Sound is what we hear. Noise is unwanted sound produced by vibrating objects that reaches human ears as waves. Excessive noise is harmful because it damages sensitive structures in the inner ear, leading to noise-induced hearing loss. This hearing loss typically occurs painlessly and gradually, but it is permanent. Not all noise is the same. Excessive noise can be extremely loud for a brief time. For example, explosive blasts, pressure releases, or alarms. Or excessive noise can be loud, long-lasting, and repeated. For example, machinery, traffic, process leaks. Why is noise an important work hazard? Noise is one of the most common occupational health hazards. Permanent hearing loss is inevitable if workers are left without controls or protection. There are various sources of noise, like pumps, compressors, power tools, and machines. Noise hazards can be found in many industries, like manufacturing, utilities, airports, construction, and mining. How the ear works. Sound waves enter the outer ear. Vibrations impact the eardrum and are transmitted to the middle and inner ear. In the middle ear, three small bones commonly called the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup amplify and transmit the vibrations generated by the sound to the inner ear. The inner ear contains a snail-like structure called a cochlea, which is filled with fluid and lined with cells with very fine hairs. These microscopic hairs move with the vibrations and convert the sound waves into nerve impulses. The result is the sound we hear. Hearing loss is permanent. Exposure to loud noise can destroy these hair cells and cause hearing loss. Human cochlear hair cells do not grow back. They are gone for good. Other health and safety issues can be attributed to noise exposure. Tinnitus or ringing in the ears, headache, elevated blood pressure, fatigue, irritability, digestive disorders, and increased susceptibility to colds and other minor infections. The risk of accidents also increases if you cannot hear warning sounds in dangerous situations. Exposure to ototoxic chemicals can also significantly increase the effects of noise on a worker. Ototoxic chemicals can be workplace chemicals or prescription medication. Ototoxins can cause hearing loss on their own or in combination with noise. You can search for ototoxins in your chemical inventory using a report in SDS binders. The best way to reduce noise exposure is to eliminate or isolate noise source. If this cannot adequately reduce the noise, hearing protection, such as earmuffs or plugs, needs to be used. The best way to reduce noise exposure is to eliminate or isolate noise source. If this cannot adequately reduce the noise, hearing protection, such as earmuffs or plugs, needs to be used. How can I tell if my workplace is too loud? Ask yourself, do you have to raise your voice to be heard? Do you have ringing in your ears at the end of a shift? Do you have to increase the volume of your car radio leaving work than you did when you went to work? Do you have difficulty understanding conversations at parties or restaurants or in crowds? If you answer yes to any of these questions, your workplace may have a noise problem. Take action on noise prevention. If you suspect there is a noise problem in a workplace, then a noise assessment or survey should be undertaken to determine the sources of noise, the amount of noise, who is exposed, and for how long. Noise is measured by sound pressure levels, called decibels or dB. Occupational exposure limits, OELs, are typically given for different durations of exposure. Common exposure limits are listed below. Noise exposure is measured by two different types of instruments based on the noise source, purpose of measurement, and location of the exposed worker. A sound pressure level, SPL meter, is used to measure the intensity and type of various sound waves that make up the noise so that the source can be properly identified and the design of controls can be effective, while a dosimeter is used to measure personal sound exposure over a work shift when noise levels vary over time. Regulatory compliance typically requires using an SPL meter or a noise dosimeter to record workplace noise levels. However, NIOSH provides a free mobile app to measure occupational noise exposure. 
It is a free and simple tool for workers and professionals to obtain preliminary noise measurements. The best way to reduce exposure to noise is to engineer it out at the design stage. An example of noise elimination in design is to use the noise rating or sound level of machinery as a selection criteria, choosing low noise or isolated processes over anything else. Substitution can be considered for the equipment and the process. An example of this is to replace metal gears with plastic gears, or swapping out diesel engines for gas or electric versions. Engineering controls like modifying the source may be an option, such as reducing the speed of the fan, reducing the force of impact, or minimizing fluid velocity. Damping or covering surfaces to absorb their vibration is also a solution. Another focus for engineering controls involves interrupting sound along the transmission path. Enclose noisy equipment in spaces or rooms that have special acoustic features, such as sound isolating acoustic louvers or sealed windows and doors. The enclosure can be total or partial, but they all share the goal of reducing noise. Placing acoustic barriers between the source and the worker or installation of control booths are common methods of isolating the receiver from the noise. As a necessary administrative control, employers need to implement a hearing conservation program when the noise level exceeds 85 dBA over an 8-hour period or 140 dBC peak sound. Hearing conservation program includes hazard identification and exposure monitoring, Control methods using the hierarchy of controls, hearing protection devices, audiometric testing, hazard communication, education, and training, record keeping, and continuous monitoring and improvement. In addition to engineering controls, there are work practices that can help reduce noise exposure. Examples include restrict access to authorized personnel only in areas with noise levels over 85 dBA. Reduce the length of time a person is required to work in areas with noise levels over 85 dBA. Conduct monitoring to ensure noise is kept at an acceptable level. Implement a hearing conservation program. Conduct audiometric testing. Adding noise hazards in job hazard analyses. Regularly inspect and maintain equipment. Conduct a noise survey of the worksite and create a noise protection plan. Use warning signs to indicate areas where hearing protection is necessary. When are hearing protective devices needed? When engineering and administrative controls do not maintain noise levels below 85 dBA, hearing protection is required. Hearing protection includes earplugs and earmuffs or a combination of both. You should be instructed on how to properly store, check, use, and take care of your hearing protection. Hearing protection must be worn continuously when required to protect hearing. Choosing a hearing protection device depends on the level of protection and suitability for the work being carried out, noise reduction rating, compatibility with other safety equipment, pattern of the noise, continuous, rhythmic, blast, series of bursts, the need to communicate and hear warning sounds, environmental factors such as heat, humidity, dust, and dirt, cost of maintenance or replacement, comfort and user preference, medical disorders. If you are exposed to noise in the workplace that exceeds occupational exposure limits, you should go for audiometric testing as part of the company's hearing conservation program. Testing can help detect hearing loss early and trigger control measures to prevent further damage. Testing is recommended as an initial hearing test, followed by a hearing test at least every 12 months afterwards. Hearing tests should be more frequent if you are exposed to noise levels that exceed 105 dBA. Notify the medical professional if you are exposed to ototoxins. Participate in training programs on noise exposure and learn the health effects and proper application of control measures like PPE, noise enclosures, restricted areas, and health monitoring. This concludes our noise presentation. Take care to protect your hearing in the workplace and in your personal life.